probably the biggest. Yeah, this picture right there. He was the youngest one in Rhyme Series, and I was the youngest one in Living Legends. And he said, uh, later, when I first time I met him, he told me the first time he met me. I guess was, he's like, You were at this, you were on tour, hieroglyphics. It was the first time I met Slug, and I remember meeting Slug. But he came up to me, I was like, Hey, Mars. Yeah, he's like, I was 15 too. Because I like, made a lot of songs when I was 15 about being 15. And, so, yeah, and he just wanted me to know that he was 15 and rapping. Like, I was. And I was like, he said, I looked at him like he was so fucking asshole. And I was, like, I was like, cool. He's like, I don't know how you're supposed to react if someone ran up to you and said that. But um, he was like the youngest person around there. He super like battle oriented. And I was the youngest person in the legends and super battle oriented. And um, the more I found out about him, like growing up, because I didn't know him back then, but like the more I found out from people that grew up with him and a lot at his funeral, it was just like, we were very similar in that aspect. And, um, Last time I saw him was um, first time I met him. Uh, first time I seen him in a while, I, I invited him to perform on the Pay Do stage at Rock the Bells. And he came out and all he would talk about was Kimmy Dawson, Kimmy Dawson, Kimmy Dawson, Kimmy Dawson. And I was like, yo, when you meet Joe Buttons, you can't kind of talk about Kimmy Dawson, bro. Like, you know, like, Mikey, calm down. Like, my wife, like, do you know how great Kimmy Dawson is? She's the greatest. Like, every everybody like and it was like multiple weekends over the summer he would not quit and uh i was a fan i was like mike yes i know about kimmy dawson yes i think she's pretty awesome <laughs> but like he, him loving her made me love her even more because he was the person that made me listen to the beatles because i refused to listen to him, but he loved him so much at a time and then he paid me the respect back because i was really in the sublime at time and he wasn't like no ever like that's crap reggae ska rock bullshit and he really like saw the genius that i saw in bradley and um, that made me feel like, you know, like me and my get this thing. And when the Kimmy, when the Kimmy thing came out, I was like, yeah, like I own a couple of Kimmy Dawson records. And it's funny because I was just showing my wife Kimmy Dawson before we went on tour that summer with Mikey. So we got to meet my wife. And like, and it, like it, was just, it was so strange how it happened because like I just told my wife about it. And uh, you know what? No. Yeah, I was telling her about it, but she wasn't on Rock the Bells with me, but I was educated. We were, we were dating, so he never got to, didn't get to meet her yet. But it was funny. I was like, he came to me with Kimmy Dawson. I was like, I've just been telling this new girl I'm dating all about Kimmy Dawson because I think that she needs to know because she was a mixed girl and blah, blah, and all this other stuff. And I was like, cool. Anyway, <laughs> I went on tour the following um, spring or fall or whatever, whenever I went on tour after that. And Mikey had been asking to go on tour with me probably should have toured together but it just didn't work out sometimes it's like just business gets in the way of friendship and uh, Kimmy Dawson hit me up on Twitter and I was like yo this is crazy wow and then we went to we had a show in Olympia and she was like she's like I'm coming to your show oh, no I saw her in, in South by Southwest and she showed up with like two dudes I think like they were wearing like yeah that's the, the her was that her group um, I think so. Yeah. And they had like Leah Tarts on, and like I was performing with DJ Quick and like Dom Kennedy, Bone Thugs and Harmony, like Super. And she walked <laughs> in with like makeup and like two tall, I believe they may have been gay dudes, and like her. And like, you know, and she's like, hi. And I've never met her. And like, we hug and we kiss, and I hug her friends. And like, you know, it's me and hugging two tall white guys and Leah Tarts in front of all these gangster rap fans, but I didn't care. And I was just like, so happy to just finally meet Kimmy because we had like text each other and like she's like where are you at we're gonna find each other and like she ran over to me and I just it was just a moment and so we stayed in touch via Twitter and I was like don't be offended by our performance because it's kind of like you know I feel so I feel like she's a saint and um we get to Olympia Washington and I'm like I'm in your city if you want to come out come on out to the show and it was like a lame show to me. it was not lame show but it was like there wasn't a lot of people and I felt like oh and also I felt like rapping in front of Kimmy I was like oh like uh, and I was like, okay. And then she's like, it was wonderful. You rocked. And she told my wife, she's like, do you guys want to come to my house and eat 
eggs right out of the chicken's butt. And I was like, yeah. So in the morning, I took my whole van full of rappers and tour managers to her house. And as she had French people staying with her that were leaving her and her, and I think her husband, and they're leaving. And she invited me to her house with her child. And we went out and picked eggs and she cooked for everybody. And uh, I, she gave everybody records and we gave her music. We all exchanged music. And then I was like, yo, you have to sign this for my friend Mikey. Like you got to, he fucking loves you. And he deserves to be here more than me because he's an even bigger fan. And she like was friends of Aesop Rock and they kind of knew each other people. So, and Aesop was like, was she cool? And I was like, she's the greatest person ever. He's like, cool, I'm gonna meet her. And then they ended up doing records together. And, but I was like, yo, like, I gotta get this for Mikey. And my wife's like, you gotta get it for Mikey. She hadn't met him yet, but I had always talked about him. And I was like, I gotta get this for Mikey. He's like, yeah. She, you know, so we, she signed it to Mikey. And I told her about Mikey. I was like, he's a great rapper and he loves you and blah, blah, blah. And then her daughter, Panda, is amazing. And Anja and everybody in her family is amazing. And we left. And I did sound set that year. And I hadn't done sound set. And I did sound set and I get there. And then Mikey's there and he's like, yo, what's up? And I was like, I've been carrying this around all day because this is for you. And he's like, oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, I met her and I know you deserve to meet her more than I. And you know, he's like, you know, fucking, he always says fucking Nick Carter. And like, I was like, yeah, man. Like, you know, and then he's like, I just did this um, book with my grandma. And she drew the pictures and I wrote the poems. And there's my grandma and his grandma that I saw his mom. And that was the last time I saw him. And, uh, who, who did the book? His grandmother and him did a book together. So she was out there, so I got to meet his grandmother that day. But um, yeah, that was the last time I saw Mikey alive. And um, yeah, those are like my two idea moments. I have many. That's just so like, be like, might be just done. Thank you guys. 